Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled Stellar Core in LASCO C3 Image Has Comet-like Characteristics. And in this figure below, we, we see a faint object. It's in a LASCO C3 image from May 20th, 2018. And as you can see, the object's angular width is about 2.5 times that of the sun. So that would be the white part. And the sun size is indicated by the white circle on the chronograph or culture. So that white circle there. So this is about 2.5 times larger than the sun. Now the object seems to have developed comet characteristics, namely a coma, uh, this gaseous uh, part, it looks gaseous, diffuse, it's obviously emitting light, that's why it looks white, and two comet-like tails. Now, although these uh, seem to be much fainter than what is usually seen in comets, and we know these are or tails, not trails. If there was one of them, uh, might be confused with a trail that the object's leaving behind, in other words, leaving material behind, but that cannot be because the object could not get to this point uh, through moving from two different directions, have to move from this direction, and that direction at the same time. And that's just not possible. So what this is, is the object is pulling material in towards itself. And this is what causes uh, comets to produce such tails as well. Now the object always ha also has what looks like a, a dark circle in it. And it seems to have a dark trail uh, within uh, the white tail. So, um, the circle, as we will see, will be will uh, be um, uh, give us a good idea of the actual size of the object. So the faint trails, uh, let's start by calling them tail, behind the object seem to be comet-like tails. These will be due to positively charged material drawn from one of the sun's nebula clouds. The material is drawn in towards the object, whilst the current of electrons is drawn from the sun's corona. The two currents meet at the object's surface and give rise to a cloud of material which emits light around the object, and which is called a coma. The coma may be many times larger than the actual comet nucleus. In this case, it appears to be only 2.5 times larger. The electrons will also combine uh, with the positive ions in the tail. Whenever a positive ion captures electrons, photons are emitted, so that's why it looks white. Photons are being emitted, visible light photons. Now, it is these photons that cause both the coma and the tail to give off light. And you may look at Article 170 entitled Comets, Planets and Crustal Displacements for more details on that. The dark circle indicates the size of the original object and the fact that it is absorbing electrons coming from the sun, leaving less electrons to combine with the positive ions coming from the sun's nebula clouds and thus producing both a surface and a region within the tails from which fo less photons or no photons are emitted. And this is what a comet usually looks like. As you can see, it has very bright tails. Uh, the tails always point away from the sun because uh, they are created due to material that the object attracts uh, towards itself from the sun's nebula clouds. So these are clouds or rings containing positive ions that are emitted by the sun in a solar wind and end up in these rings. Uh, just like uh, Saturn has rings, the sun has rings or nebula clouds around it, but the sun is a much more powerful star than Saturn, so it has a much larger uh, ring area or capacitor. It's called, I call it the solar capacitor. But James McKenney was the one who first called it uh, by that name.
So what we have is positive ions coming in from uh, the sun's outer nebula clouds and they are electrons coming in from the sun's corona. And this occurs because the object, like all objects in the universe, from atoms to stars to galactic nuclei, have a negative outer layer which attracts the positive ions, which then attracts the electrons. So we have a current coming in towards the object. The electrons and the ions meet at the surface and the ions start capturing some of these electrons. When they do, photons are emitted. And then once the atoms are neutral, they, there will be chemical reactions. So for example, hydrogen will interact with oxygen, create water. And that's why we often uh, see water uh, in comet tails. The electrons will move beyond the surface into the tail region and interact with the ions in the tail region, also leading to light emission and um, the production of uh, molecules uh, and, and like water and sulfur dioxide, things like that. Now this uh, also occurs because the object is following an elliptical orbit. Objects, even though they have negative outer layers but follow circular orbits, will not uh, pull a current from the solar capacitor because they will stay within the same uh, um, potential, electric potential. So it requires a change in where the object is in space that has a different potential for it to draw a current from the solar capacitor. So the object in the Lasco C3 image above is not as bright as normal comets, suggesting that it does not draw as strong a current as a comet would. This indicates that it does not have a normal outer negative layer of electrons, which suggests that it is a stellar core, since these objects are known to be depleted in electrons and act as super ions, whereas normal celestial objects, such as the Sun and its planets, and even asteroids will act as super atoms or super neutral atoms. And you may look at Article 193 entitled Stellar Cores in the Sun's Corona. Why do they not collide with the Sun? And here's another illustration of what occurs with comets. You can see the coma, you can see the tail, positive ions are coming in, the electron current is coming from the Sun's corona, and they will meet here, produce the coma, the electrons will keep on moving into uh, the tail region, and they will interact and produce light, and uh, chemical reactions will occur as well. Now here we see a uh, comet ISON in several images. Um, the most interesting is of course the Lasco C3 image. You can see that it produced this type of tail. Uh, the coma was not spherical. So the fact that the current object has an absolutely spherical coma suggests that this particular object is perfectly spherical and very large. And of course, most comets uh, are small and are uh, just like asteroids, so they have uh, far from a spherical shape, so they will not produce a, a spherical coma. Uh, but the current object obviously seems to produce a perfectly spherical coma, and this is not the only time it's, uh, this type of object has been observed. Um, they were also observed, and there's more than one here, in 2009 and 2016. This one is from February of 2016. As you can see, one of them, uh, one of these objects is very bright and therefore must have a, a stronger uh, outer electron uh, layer, so it has a more negatively charged layer. Uh, it still uh, has a dark surface, which means that it's still absorbing electrons, so it has not absorbed as many electrons as it needs to to uh, counteract the positive core. But um, it is brighter than the one in the 2018 image, so it most likely had more electrons than the one we are seeing in the 2018 image. But this object was not alone. It was accompanied by this one, which produced a very faint trail. 
and this one was obviously extremely depleted in electrons. Uh, it's hardly seen at all. Of course, when these objects first come into the solar system, they are not seen at all. They do not emit any light whatsoever, and they do not draw a current from the solar capacitor because they have um, they don't have electrons in their outer layer. They have a neutral outer layer. And here we see two of these objects as well. As you can see, producing the same type of trail, but fainter. So these are possibly uh, newer arrivals in the solar system. They are also not aligned with the sun. As you can see, these two are aligned with the sun. In other words, the negative currents coming from the sun, the, the layer points in the opposite direction, but these two are not. And of course, it's likely that they are able to draw electrons, not just from uh, the sun, but from other objects that may have arrived before and may now have quite a lot of electrons in their outer layer, other stellar cores that are around the sun. And it seems that they are interacting with uh, one of these here um, because uh, they are not aligned with the sun in this image. They are possibly aligned with another object that's just behind this darker region that is always in these images. There's even what seems to be some uh, light emission here that may be coming from that object that is just behind here and that um, these objects are possibly drawing electrons from it. So an object which absorbs electrons will be depleted in electrons, which the stellar cores that have invaded the solar system are known to be. So the object in figure one and the objects in the above images therefore appear to be uh, more objects belonging to this system of invading dead stars, which come from the sun and absorb energy from it. And we see one of these objects in an SDO image drawing material from the sun. This is the main way they draw uh, energy from the sun. This material will have uh, protons in it. It will have a lot of gravitational energy, which is in the form of photons within that matter. And the object draws that and draws gravitational energy that way. It most likely will draw electrons, first of all, when it first makes contact with the sun's corona. 